Hillside Church? Sure. I have got such a love for this church. Such a love. I remember years and years ago when Wayne and I, we were pastors in another church in Cape Town. And um, we had a visiting speaker and he walked up to me and he said to me, Mal, I just need to say something to you that whenever you walk into church, it's like you're wearing your wedding dress when you come to church. I'm somebody that loves church. I grew up with our parents. So church became my family and this is where I learned how to be a mom, how to be a wife and that kind of thing. So church is very, very, very dear to me. And I believe that, you know, I'm not the greatest speaker around, but I'm a woman who loves Jesus, loves Jesus, and he has given me something to share with you this morning. And like I say, I'm not an eloquent speaker, but he's given me something, and particularly in what I'm going to be talking about this morning, because I really feel that it's something that I've really, (laughs) I've had to walk through this thing. It's been very, very, very difficult And even while Roger was sharing about us going, it's a very bittersweet moment for us because we are so invested into the life of this church and into the people that we've sown into. And, you know, even recently, you know, I've I've connected with, with new people very, very recently, like in the last two weeks. And you're probably thinking, like, why didn't you tell me? I think Megan is in the, Megan Dutton's there. So we've just connected our hearts together recently. We had a breakfast together, and anyway, long story short, I was preparing last night, and I really felt God lay you on my heart, you and your beautiful man, and I know that we haven't walked a long journey together, um, Meg, but I believe that in that short meeting that we had just chatting, I believe that God connected our hearts together, and it wasn't a waste. I know that we're not going to be here in our future and whatever, but for Wayne and I, Um, distance is not an issue in our life. We'll be connected forever from that meeting. And I just want to say that God has got such a wonderful plan for you and your husband. You know, I saw this picture of a man digging in a cave where he's digging and he's digging and he's like one centimeter away from getting to the other side, one centimeter away and and he gives up. I just want to pray over you two. Don't give up. Because God has got something amazing for you. He has called you Megan Dutton by name. He has called you by name. He has called you by name. And he's got wonderful, wonderful things in store for you. And you're nearly there. It's this close. It's a centimeter away. Take a hold of what he has for you. It is beautiful and it is wonderful. We are the Duns. I don't know where your beautiful wife is. She's at the back. I also just felt for you, I am speaking on patience today, and I believe that I've walked a very long road in patience, but I also believe that God has got you guys in waiting patiently for the call of God in your life, and I believe that he has brought you here to outwork that, and I just say, just walk with him in patience, look up, look at him, the author and the perfecter of your faith, he's got wonderful things in store for you. There's ministry all over you. Grab hold of what God has for you. He's got you here for a reason in this season. He's going to use you in a mighty and a powerful way. Patience. Hang in there. Look up. Okay. So, patience. In 2019, Wayne and I were living in the Middle East. If you know Wayne, Wayne and I well enough, we've, we've lived in many places and we are always open for God for an adventure. We love adventure. We love living in the edge. And even right now as I'm speaking, Wayne and I are trusting God for things and we are living on the edge. But I'm going to share a story with you. And I think the reason why I'm going to share this with you because not everybody knows our story. So some of my preach will not have any context. But in 2019, we were in the Middle East. I've never been so content in my life. I loved living in Qatar. We were a part of the most amazing church, great leaders. We had wonderful friends, many, many, many different nations. We now have people all over the world, scattered all over the world. It was beautiful. And um, one day Wayne came home from work and he said, Mal, I've got some news. And he sat me down before we went and spoke to our family and said to me, our season in Qatar is over. 
My job has come to an end. My co- they've ended my contract and we need to leave. Friends, I can't even tell you. I can't even tell you how much that devastated me. I was absolutely devastated. I don't know if any of you have been to the Middle East, but when you look around, besides the beautiful skyline of Qatar and Dubai, it looks beautiful. But if you go into a normal residential area, it isn't pretty at all. It really, really isn't pretty. But I remember the one day I pulled over my car and I looked out the window and all I saw buildings and dust and whatever. But my heart was so content and so full. And I was just drinking it in. I felt so content and so happy to be there. And then one day it just came to an end and we'd only been there three and a half years and I thought, Lord, why, why, why? We've only just come here. Why? But anyway, we left there and just before we left, we went to go and visit our our daughter in New Zealand knowing that we were leaving um, Qatar and would need to go back to South Africa. And while we were there on holiday, God spoke to, well, he didn't really speak to Wayne, he spoke to me first. He always speaks to the wives first, everybody. (laughs) He spoke to me about that nation and I very quietly kept it to myself. So while we were on holiday there, I was scouting the land, looking at the people and God was speaking to me. We went back to Qatar before we headed back to South Africa. And I said to Wayne, I feel God has got something on this. And then from there, 2019, we started praying and asking God to open the door. I remember our last day in church, I wore black and white. Why did I wear black and white? New Zealand, all blacks. I'm not an all black supporter. I'm still South African supporter. But my favorite team is the all blacks and South Africa. So anyway, I I stood in faith in 2019, saying goodbye to our church, in faith that I was going to New Zealand. And when I say in faith, I thought that I would be in New Zealand in about three or four months. Friends, it's 2024. It's been five years. Five very, very, very difficult years. Very, very, very hard years. But you know what? God has been good. And there were some things in in our life that God had to refine and work with and get us ready for what God has next for us. So anyway, I'm going to start my preach, but I'm going to get back to that story just now. And you know know what's amazing is that I brought my prayer journal, and I've got some prayers that I prayed in 2019, because you also know that 2010 COVID happened as well in between that, and show you how amazing God is in answering prayer. So if you can think of a school subject or a varsity subject, what would you say is the hardest, hardest subject you can think of? So I'm not going to ask you because there's many of you, but just think about the hardest subjects you can think of to do. And anyway, I googled it. And these are the subjects that I came up with. Quantum mechanics, astrophysics, organic chemistry. Friends, I think that patience is harder. (laughs) I really do believe that. Patience can be crushing. Friends, can I just tell you that this season right now that Wayne and I are in, this has been the most crushing, crushing, hardest season of our lives in this last year. Really difficult. I know that some of you might not have known, but I, especially this year, I have felt crushed. It's been so hard. I literally felt at times like the enemy was dangling a carrot. And as soon as I got closer, he would just pull it away. Can anybody relate to that? When you are trusting God for something and you feel that it's right there, it's nearly there. And then suddenly it's just pulled away from you. It's been like that for five years, but within the last couple of months, really, really hard. Friends, another question. What do you think the hardest fruit of the Spirit is? If I can even ask that question. Patience. Patience is hard, friends. It is the calm endurance of hardship. Waiting in patience is one of the hardest things for us to endure. The meaning of the word patience, to, to be able to accept or tolerate delays, problems, or suffering without being annoyed or anxious. I believe in South Africa, we are challenged with this on a daily basis. 
home affairs, standing in checkers queues. Yeah, we get, we get annoyed. So, patience is a fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, to 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, another word for patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, another hard one. Against such things, there is no law. The Bible teaches us that it is, an important, it is an important aspect of our spiritual growth to endure patience. And then just picture that man digging that cave again when you are waiting in patience or you're waiting for something where you just, you're digging and you're digging and you're digging and you're one centimeter away and then you just give up. Friends, can I just say to you, do not give up. If God has called you to something or to a place, don't give up. Give it your all, but remain present in where you are. When you're feeling the heat and patience, God's, like God's not quick, moving quick enough for you, the traffic is not moving quick enough, the person serving you is not moving quick enough, the list goes on. I'm sure you can relate. When we are impatient, we are frustrated. Can I tell you, this has been a very frustrating time for us. Galatians 6 verse 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good. At the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Do not give up, friends. We live in the McDonald's generations where everything is quick. We have drive throughs a click of a button, and something to deliver to your door. Friends, we need to, do our, we need to be teaching our children patience. Make them wait for things. I know it sounds cool, but make them wait. They need to learn this. It'll teach them to one day to wait on God. We may think that at a time, we may, sorry, we may think at the time that a trial or temptation is beyond our strength. But Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will, he, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. He will never give you something that you can't endure. God is never too early. He's never too late. He is always, always on time. Do you have prayers that have not been answered? I know I have many. This is my prayer book from 2019 and 2020. And there's a few pages there where I've repeated the same prayer over and over again. But I just want to read this to you. Now, remember that we were in the Middle East. Can I also just say that we were being groomed to, to be pastors in that, in that church? So we really thought this is it. We're going to be in the Middle East and we are going to be pastors there. The 19th of November, 2019. At this stage, we had just got back to South Africa. Father, I know you have called us to lead your people. Why could we have not been on eldership in Doha? It really seemed like it could have been an option for us. Father, I just want to pray for the most amazing job for Wayne in New Zealand. Amazing schools for our children. And while we wait, Father, a beautiful special ed place for my son, Ryan. It would be amazing for you to open a door to a wonderful company who will do our immigration and bring us to New Zealand. Father, that's, um, friends, that's what, what's happening right now. This is 2019, it's 2024. We waited five years, but God has opened the door. He's provided a company to take us over. He provided a place for my son to have special ed, and he's, got the, he's provided the most exciting, amazing job for my husband. Not forgetting our call as well. So Wayne is a civil engineer and he loves that. But we get to do both, which is amazing. There's one more prayer that I want to read for you. So it went along the lines of the ones I've just read to you. But there's one that was very particular that I wanted to share with you. I said... Father, please put us in the right location. We have tried to go to New Zealand three times. 
the first time we would have lived in Auckland, which would have been three hour drive away from my daughter and my grandchildren. The second time we tried, which is the end of last year, we would have been completely on the other island. I was so desperate, I said, I'll take anything at this stage. I'll get on a plane and fly, it's closer. Listen to the detail, friends. On the 21st of January, 2020, I asked the perfect location. Friends, he's placing us in the same town where my daughter and grandchildren live. Right, I mean, I could literally walk to their house and go and visit them. Friends, he is so in the detail. The waiting period may not turn out the way you think it's gonna turn out. Treasure every moment. Treasure every moment. I'm sure you've learned by now that God has got his own timing. <laughs> he lives out of time, and our time and his time are two different things. And the word says so, Isaiah 55, verse eight to nine says, for my thoughts are your thoughts. Neither, sorry, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways, are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I heard Jilly say something profound the other day, and friends, our answers are in the word. Even Roger preached a week ago, everything we need to know, life is an open book test. I heard Jilly say that. I thought that's wonderful. Everything we need to know is in the Word of God. It's not for God to adjust to the way we think. We have to adjust to His ways when we are waiting. If you have known Jesus for a little while, you will know and you would have learned that He's not in a hurry. He has a plan for and a purpose for each of our lives. He will fulfill what he has promised, but according to his own timing. Five years, friends. Keep your eyes fixed on him as you wait patiently. James 1, my favorite scripture. My husband loves reading this to me. James 1, verse 2 to 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you ever, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. The perseverance finishes its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. In this time that we have been at Hillside, God has been refining us and getting us ready. This is a safe place, friends. The leadership here, it's safe. It is good. So when, we walk in, when we're walking in our daily lives, we need to have patience for, with our spouses. We need to be patient for spouses. There's a lot of you that I know that are trusting for God to give you a spouse. Walk in patience. And then there are such beautiful people in this room that I know that are waiting so patiently for children. And I know that after Wayne and I have gone, when we come back, we're going to see a few more extra children running around the front. Keegan Tanae, that'll be you too. I'm so excited to meet your children. They're going to be so good looking. <laughs> and then we have patience for our calling. God has called you all to certain things, and some of you know what your calling is, but it's hard. We need to have patience to wait for, to wait for that. Patience for waiting for the right job. Patience waiting for breakthrough in your finances. Patient and patience in waiting to see your loved ones. I haven't seen my daughter in five years. And I am so excited for the day that I actually get to see her and to do life with her. Patience in waiting for healing. Patience in pregnancy, even being pregnant. Patience for when that baby arrives. Patience waiting to finish school of varsity. Patience waiting for your children to return to Jesus when they've strayed. Patience waiting for your family salvation. The word of God says you and your household will be saved. Patience to go and be with the Lord. I know that sounds bizarre, but I'm going to say it. 
So Wayne's gran at the age of 85, beautiful Christian, loved Jesus. She's the reason why my husband is saved today. But can I tell you, she just said, Mal, my, my body is failing me. My eyes are failing me. I can't read the word anymore. I've had enough. It's time to go to Jesus. 85, his gran lived to 100. She died a week after she turned 100. <laughs> so even in that, we need to have patience. Beautiful, beautiful lady. She's with Jesus right now. There's also a lot of us that have been given prophetic words and we are waiting patiently for those things to be fulfilled. Can I just say something? Don't let that distract you from everything. Some people get words and they are so focusing and working towards that happening in their lives. Don't be distracted. People prophesy in part. I know of a family who got a word that he was going to be a wealthy businessman and he literally got stuck in, in a rut where all he did was work towards that. And it turns out that their whole lives, their children couldn't go to school. They didn't have finances. He was set on doing this. Take your prophetic word. I remember Helene said when she gets a prophetic word, she takes it and she puts it at the back of her Bible and she prays and she said, Lord, you do that in your time or I'm not sure if this is for me, but it's in the back of my Bible just in case. Yeah. We need patience to keep ourselves pure before we get married. That is a biggie, friends. It is so worth the wait. Patience with people who may not do something to your standards. Patience with your spouse. Patience with your children. Jesus is our perfect, perfect example. Colossians 3, 13 to 14 says this. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves in compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. <coughs> Imagine waiting and being patient without Jesus. Imagine doing this alone. I can't imagine doing any of this without Jesus. Because there were times when things were so hard and friends, I have cried many, many, many tears. Many tears. Because this is not just our call. There's also a heart thing attached to this is that our family have been in New Zealand. It has been the most hardest, hardest, hardest thing. And I'm sure as I'm speaking right now, God is reminding you of those things that you're waiting for. God's patience is something else. While we were dead in our transgressions and sin, He waited for us to choose Him. He is patient with us. There are some of you in this room right now that has not fully surrendered their lives to Jesus. And He's waiting patiently. Friends, it's time. The time is now. Jesus' ministry only started when He was 30 years old. Then there's the story about Lazarus, Lazarus, Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus were, were friends with Jesus. Jesus absolutely loved them. He was very close to them and he spent lots of time with them. And when Jesus was away, Mary and Martha sent for Jesus because Lazarus was sick. He was really, really, really ill. And Jesus knew that Mary and Martha were really struggling. But yet, can I just tell you that Jesus sometimes delays for a very specific reason. For a very, very specific reason. At that time, Jesus wanted to show his power over death. So he waited a bit, and while he waited, Lazarus actually died. So when he eventually did go to help them, he didn't just heal him. He raised him from the dead. Our best learning is while we are waiting, friends. That's when you learn the most. That's where Jesus refines you 
and you learn the most. I can tell you right now that in your time of waiting and the hardships and the grueling time of waiting, those are the times that you're going to treasure the most, especially when you walk into that thing that you're waiting for. You're going to treasure that time. Galatians 8 verse 25 says, But if we hope for what we do not have yet, we wait for it patiently. So we joined Hillside. I've worked it out. This is our fourth year at Hillside. Can I tell you, it's been the most amazing, beautiful years for us. We joined here knowing that we would leave soon. So when we joined, we met with Roger and Tan. We said, we love you guys. We love your church. We love what you're doing. But God has called us to New Zealand. But while we are here, we feel that God is planting us. We are going to throw our roots down and love like we are never going to leave. And friends, can I also tell you something? <laughs> Wayne and I aren't gone yet. We are still here. And we are going to serve. We're going to serve you. And we're going to love you and get to know you until God takes us somewhere else. The process is still hard, and there's still a lot at stake. A lot at stake, and there are things that might stop, the, stop us from going, but we are doing it with family, the people that we love the most, Hillside Church. God has put us in the right, time, in the right place, at the right time, for a reason. We have served as family, we have pastored, we have made beautiful friends. This walk of patience has been extremely hard, but God, he has been there for me every step of the way and for my family. His intentions for the hard month was to be here. And the reason why he put us here is like I've often asked, why do you, there must be a reason why you've planted us here. He planted us for one main reason, to learn healthy leadership. God has called Wayne and I to lead people and he wanted us to be healthy in our leadership because we've been in unhealthy leadership, very unhealthy leadership. And we, he has set us on the right path. These guys in the front row, they are amazing. They are amazing. They have wisdom Caleb, you have got profound wisdom. I think you're under 30, if I'm not mistaken. You're a wise, wise, wise man. And sometimes Caleb says things, and it irritates me. <laughs> and it makes me angry. And then I go home, and I think, oh, gosh, he was right. He was right. A wise, wise, wise man. This man has served my family, him and his wife by looking after, looking out for our teenage boys. They are amazing. And my Matt especially needed to be under your leadership for a season because God has called him. He's got a calling on his life and God has called him to lead people. And he's gonna leave here healthy, Caleb, healthy because of what you've sown into him. Aaron, well done. Good and faithful servants. So his intention was for us to be here. And we've learned such beautiful things. We've learned from Roger and Tan, beautiful couple. Their leadership is so healthy and so refreshing and I feel absolutely free. Before I came here, I'd never actually preached in church. I wasn't allowed to. <laughs> Only to ladies. Look at me now. <laughs> Friends, navigating, how do we navigate curveballs? We need to exercise patience, and it only comes from him. Sometimes a curveball happens, and it makes us wait even longer. We've had many curveballs over the last five years. Paul and Silas in prison. If you ever read that story, go and look it up and read about Paul and Silas in prison. So Paul casts a demon out of a lady. He gets reported to somebody and they get thrown in jail. And they get beaten, beaten up terribly. And in prison, what do they do? 
they start praying and they start singing hymns so everybody can hear them. How amazing is that? God causes a massive earthquake and they are all set free and the, jails are, the, the, the jail doors are unlocked. And what happens? The warden gets saved. And what does Paul say to him? Paul said, you, if you believe in Jesus, you and your household will be saved. You and your household. So those of you that are waiting for family, they'll come. Because that's what the word of God promises. So big curveballs for us is Wade's contract ending in 2019. Can I also say something to you? When God delays things, it's often to rescue you out of a situation. And sometimes you're not even aware of the situation that he's rescuing you from. So we were devastated that we didn't come onto eldership or we're pastors in the Middle East, but there was something that happened with my family while we were there that we weren't, that Wayne and I weren't aware of, that only here at Hillside did we, did we actually find out what happened. And can I tell you something? It was so devastating to us at the time that actually it was good for us not to have been in the Middle East. God rescued us. He rescued us. But you know what, friends? I didn't understand it at the time. It took years for us to get the answer. But friends, can I say, if God stops something or he delays something, there's a very good reason. And you have to look up and you have to trust. Yeah. Another curveball. Wayne was, went to New Zealand in, 20, in 2020 the first time. You know, you know what happened then? COVID happened. Wayne was stuck there for a full year and the children and I were here in, in, in Durban. We were stuck here in South Africa. It was really hard. And to be honest, I still really haven't got the answer of why he spent that year there. <laughs> Although he got to spend it with my daughter and our grandkids. But I'm still waiting for God to give me answers. I know that God, that, sorry, that Wayne met some amazing people there and, fr and formed friendships with people that could be key later. But it's still something that I'm waiting for answers on. Hillside was part of God's plan. How did we get here? When I was waiting for Wayne to come back from New Zealand, I felt God specifically say to me, I drove past you the one day, and he said to me, Mal, that church over there, Hillside. Now, I had be, been here before, about maybe about 15 or 20 years ago. Sorry, 15 years ago. I'd come here once, and I, um, I'd met a few people here, but I didn't really know much about this church. But I felt in my heart that when Wayne comes back, this is where we need to come. God said it, and I believed it. <laughs> yeah, and we've been on a wonderful journey with you. We've got such beautiful friends in here. <clears throat> and then last year, as you all know, Wayne and I tried to go to New Zealand again. A big curve for I had a medical crisis, and Wayne had to come back. And I've still con continued with my medical crisis this year. But can I just tell you something? God is in the detail. He knew about those medical issues before Wayne left. And he knew that for us to get into New Zealand, all those things need to get sorted out. So I had two operations at the end of the year, fixed, sorted. Beginning of the year, I've got an autoimmune disease that has kind of been in remission for years but I had a major relapse this year and I ended up in, in hospital under the most amazing physician who has treated me well, put me on the right diet, just been so amazing to me so that now when I go and present myself to, um, to New Zealand's medical board, they can see, oh, ulcerative colitis, sorted, been treated well, been medicated for, she's well. Hysterectomy, sorted, no issues there. And then also this year, I don't know if you all know, but I have a, I have a pacemaker. Um, anyway, long story short, it's, an, it's a hereditary thing for my mom. And this year, my battery actually started giving up on me. And I've had a battery change. That's all. God knew all of these things. He knew that I needed to get these things sorted out before I go into the nations. Because what you, how am I going to help people with a flat battery? <laughs> So he sorted out all of these things. Friends, don't think it's a curveball. God is at work when he delays things. 
So what happened, Chanel was here last week and she, she spoke about us saying our yes. So what happens when you say yes and then you're waiting for your yes to become a reality? It's very hard. Don't lose hope. Our patience the enemy. Don't give him a foothold. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Remain in him. All the right, at the right time, God will open the right doors. Keep your heart open. He may do things differently. Be present in your waiting. Get stuck in, serve. Wayne and I have got stuck into Hillside. We've served knowing we are going and we will still serve. So Wayne and I went away with Roger and Tan a couple, a couple of weeks ago and we shared the news with them that we'd be going. And I said, I've made a promise to them and I said, I'm going to serve until I leave, until the day I leave. You've got to make sure that I keep my word, huh? What are you doing while you're waiting? What is coming out of you when your patience is being tested? I want you to go into the next week and I actually want to Think about this when you're standing in checkers, when you're at Mackey D's, when you're waiting for a meal. Romans 12, 12 says, be joyful in hope, be patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. So how do we cope when we're waiting in patience? This is the answer. John 15, 4, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Remain in him. There were some, some things in my life where I really felt that I had to exercise patience with grit. And one of them was bet my career. So I'm a pharmaceutical rep. And can I tell you, I love what I do. I really, really love it. The medical world is my passion besides Jesus and my family. And I was a mum really, really young before I was a Christian. I became a mum. I think I was 16 at the time when I became a mum. So my daughter is 30. And um, I had to work really hard to get where I am today. I didn't finish school. I didn't go to varsity or anything like that, but I was determined determined to do well and I had to walk closely with Jesus and patiently if you look at my CV you'll see that the first 10 years of my working career maybe even 15 years two years moved to the next company two years moved to the next company two years moved to the next company that wasn't because that was my plan because I didn't want to want to give my all in those places I literally had to climb my way up through the corporate ladder slowly and patiently with God's help. It was a lot easier when I gave my life to Jesus. That's when things really turned around. Friends, we need to have patience. And then also, those people that are wanting to walk into their call, for us, Wayne and I, walking into our call was hard. We had to wait. It was hard. I exercised patience with grit. And then also having to leave the Middle East, not understanding why we had to leave at the time. But can I tell you something? I have let that go because I know now God's answered my prayer. I know why we weren't meant to be there. And then New Zealand, five years, 2019 to 2024, when we felt we were going in the next three months. Little did we know, but can I say something? I am so grateful so grateful to God that we've walked this journey of patience because I've learned so much. We are better people now. We are better leaders. We are going to go to the nation and we're going to love his people. We are going to pour our lives into people that we've done here. Okay, I'm almost done. I just felt that I needed to share this. Waiters in the Bible. We've got a whole lot of waiters in the Bible. Jesus had to wait 30 years to begin his ministry. The disciples told Jesus, sorry, the disciples were told by Jesus to wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit. Noah waited for God's timing to leave the ark. Moses waited on God, waited on God on a mountain. Paul and Silas praying and singing hymns as they exercised patience, waiting on the Lord. 
Joseph, sold by his brothers into slavery, thrown into jail for a crime he did not commit. But look at him. Look where, look where he landed up. David was anointed by Saul to be king at 15, but he was only made king at 30. God is never too early. He's never too late. He is always on time. This is our third time trying to go to New Zealand. And I'm going to read something. That my Hannah, Tedda, gave to me. She gave me a word, and I've hung on to this with everything that I have. And I just felt this is a word for you guys that are in the waiting. What the, what the enemy intended for our humiliation, God will use for his glory. The Lord will put a crown on your heads and reinstate our dignity. 